internet friends. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Michiwi and I'm on a weight loss journey. And Wednesdays have been dubbed Wellness Wednesday because those are the days that I like to take time to go over some nutritional information with you guys. I gotta say I'm really pumped up for this. Uh, Steven and I were just in a discussion about the importance of carbs because as some of you may know he's on a keto diet and I am not. And it astonishes me how much I used to just take everybody's word about what was good for me without researching, without doing my own investigation, forming my own opinion. And rather than me just sitting there and agreeing with everything that Steven said, I was able to have a back and forth conversation, which felt great. Uh, we both <laughs> are at a standstill on who's correct. I think I'm right. He raises a lot of great points, but uh, I am always right in every conversation, obviously. Okay, so moving on, today's topic. So last Wednesday, I lightly touched that sodium's balance is closely linked to the balance of other electrolytes. And I wanted to explore that further. So let's do that. Uh, first off, what are electrolytes? Well, simply put, electrolytes are minerals that carry an electric charge and are essential for various bodily functions. They include potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, phosphate, and biocarbonate. Electrolytes play a vital role in maintaining proper hydration levels, maintaining nerve and muscle function, balancing pH levels, and supporting overall cell function. So we know that sodium maintains fluid balance, regulates blood pressure, supports muscle function and contraction, and can be found in various processed foods. But let's quickly go over the others. Most of these do the fluid balance and nerve function stuff. So I'm just going to go over the special notes and where to find them. Okay, so potassium. Potassium helps to counteract the effects of sodium on blood pressure and are found in bananas, oranges, potatoes, sweet potatoes, spinach, and avocados. Calcium is well known for its role in building and maintaining strong bones and teeth. Additionally, it's involved in blood clotting and maintaining heart rhythm and can be found in dairy products like milk, cheese, and yogurt, as well as leafy greens like kale and broccoli. Magnesium is involved in hundreds of biochemical reactions in the body give it up for magnesium, including energy production, protein synthesis, and blood glucose control. They are found in nuts, such as almonds, cashews and peanuts, seeds like pumpkin and sunflower seeds, whole grains, and leafy green vegetables. Chloride is involved in the production of stomach acid, which aids in digestion. It is primarily obtained through table salt, but can also be found in foods like seaweed, olives, and some processed foods. Phosphate is an interesting one. It is a component of DNA, RNA, and ATP, the primary energy carrier in cells. It is essential for bone health, energy metabolism, and cell signaling. It is found in protein-rich foods like meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy products, and nuts. And last but not least, biocarbonate. So biocarbonate acts as a buffer in the body, helping to regulate pH levels and maintain acid-based balance. It is particularly important in the blood where it helps to neutralize excess acid and maintain proper pH for optimal bodily function. These electrolytes work together to support various physiological processes and maintain overall health and well-being, ensuring adequate intake of electrolyte. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna be tricky. Ensuring adequate intake of electrolyte-rich foods is essential for proper hydration and optimal bodily function. Uh, so, when should you make sure you take in your electrolytes? Well, it's essential to replenish your electrolytes before and after an intense workout, or if you're following a low carb or ketogenic diet. When we sweat, we lose electrolytes, particularly sodium and potassium. This can lead to symptoms like muscle cramps, fatigue, dizziness, and even more severe issues if left unaddressed. So before a workout, consuming electrolytes help maintain balance and supports muscle function, hydration, and prevents imbalances during activity. And after a workout, replenishing electrolytes aids in restoring balance and promoting muscle recovery and supporting hydration. So after doing a little bit of research on electrolytes, I'm thinking about splitting up my healthy smoothie. Have half before and then save the other half for after the workout. Uh, from what I can tell, spinach is the best low calorie source for both sodium and potassium. And my smoothie gives me a cup of it. So I'm really glad that I researched this further not only so that I can have a more informed opinion about when to be 
eating certain types of foods and splitting up smoothies. I'm coming into your camera. Oop. I'm going to go run some errands and have gas in the truck or something, I think. Mm, I love you. I love you. But also, so that I can have discussions about this with Steven, who buys the groceries, but I'm the one picking it out and making all the food. So it would make more sense that I would have a more active role in these discussions. <laughs> Has this segment helped you guys come up with any alterations? Are you liking this segment? Are there any nutritional facts that you want me to cover? As someone who isn't a dietitian or a doctor or knows that much? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so carrying on the theme with wellness, I wanna do a quick health update. I got my TSH, T3, T4 results back. Completely normal. Everyone is in agreement that I had transient thyroidism. It's gone. It's something I don't have to worry about anymore. Um, I also spoke to my gyno. She saw that I wanted more clarification. I did not have to wait for the telemed appointment. She reached out and I'm so happy that she did. Um, <laughs> not a fan of for your age, but I am at that age now. But for my age, everything looks good. Everyone, my doctor, my gyno, and me are all in agreement that this is because I've been on a strict calorie restriction for so long. We have decided to up my calories based on the level of exercise, the protein that I'm getting in, and just overall, I don't need to be losing weight fast. At this point, I am no longer in an obese or overweight area anymore. I am at acceptable and slightly overweight on two different scales. So now I'm just working on acceptable to fit which I know I haven't been vlogging it, but this has been like over a year. I am at 158 from 210. <laughs> okay, so we covered my test results and the fact that it's probably just hormones messing with my cycle and that we're upping my calories to 1400. And the other thing is Pumpkin has a vet appointment today at four where hopefully the doctor can take a look at it and say, yep, I'm gonna remove it at his next dental appointment coming up in April. March, April, what, what month am I in? Yeah, I'm in March, okay. And last but not least, I'm not exercising today. I am so sore. I actually walked like two and a half miles yesterday, which isn't that much. And it wasn't on the treadmill continuously, but I went up a lot of hills, like a lot of hills. So I'm a little tired. Just gonna do a little rest recovery moment today. So that's it, that's my update. And this is gonna be it for Wellness Wednesday. So I'm gonna remind you guys to drink your water, replenish those electrolytes, and expect me to see you tomorrow. Bye.